The reading is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, um, reading verses 28 to 32. The parable of the two sons. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Judith. What do you think about God, life, meaning, purpose? What do you think about regret, beauty, shame, honour? What do you think about Jesus, change, the kingdom, who is in, who is out? What do you think you are doing here tonight at our Ash Wednesday service? What do you think? Jesus has a question for all of us this evening. What do you think? Jesus does not ask this question because he lacks information. He asks the question because we lack understanding. The question introduces a short parable to a group of priests and elders. We'll be talking a lot about parables over the next six weeks here at church as we dive into our next sermon series on kingdom stories. But for now, note that Jesus' favourite method of teaching were stories. Stories that were intended to slow us down and force us to ask, what do I think? What do I really think? Of course, this links with the heart of this season of Lent. The purpose of Lent that forces us to slow down, ask questions, to think and prepare. Lent is a 40-day period before Easter, patterned on the 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness preparing for his calling. And significant work takes a long time, doesn't it? The road to Easter is a long road. The challenge is that people want to experience the power of Easter without the preparation of Lent. Of course, the power will be all the more powerful if we can slow down and prepare and consider Jesus' question, what do you think? The parable of the two sons, which we've just heard Judith read to us, the question I want to ask is, what does it ask us to think about? Let's read it again with that in mind. And as you hear it, try to feel the awkward force of Jesus' teaching as he starts this parable. What do you think? He hasn't told the story yet, has he? There isn't anything to think about. And yet, this is how Jesus starts. Not how he ends. Jesus wants to get our attention, to slow us down and help us to ponder before he even says a word. Then he says, there was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. 
but later changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. That's the whole story. The rest of the passage is just Jesus' commentary. The whole thing in just a couple of verses. The parable of the two sons asks us to think through at least three questions. Firstly, what has God called me to do? Secondly, how have I responded? And third, is there any mind changing I need to do? Firstly, what has God called me to do? Verse 29 says, there was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. And then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. In the parable, Jesus, the father is asking his sons to do something, which leads us to ask, what has God called me to do? And then secondly, how have I responded? Well, look at the responses of the, the two sons. The first son said, I will not, but afterward changed his mind and went. His response was initially no. He thought about it and he changed his mind. Now the second son, he answered, yes, I will, sir. A bit like a, a US Army Marine, isn't it? Sir, yes, sir. Obeying unquestioningly, but he did not go. And then the third point, is there any mind changing I need to do? Because the first son answered, I will not. He answered, but later he changed his mind and went. One of these two brothers spent some time thinking about his response. And that is what the season of Lent calls us to do. To consider what God has called us to do. To ask how have I responded? And to think, is there any mind changing needed? Look at verse 31, where Jesus goes on to talk about the meaning of this parable. Which of the two did what the father wanted? And the crowd responded, the, the first one. You could say it was the one who actually obeyed. But it is not simply the one who obeyed, is it? It is the one who stopped to think about his response. Notice there is one son who responded and then considered his response, and the other son just responded. It is simple for us to say that it is the one who obeys Jesus, that is the one who does his will. But we have to ask, what is the step that comes before the obedience? It is the prayerful, slow consideration of the one son versus the son who does not stop to think about his response. Jesus goes on to say in verses 31 and 32, Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. Jesus is saying that the power of truly considering your response is so strong that the tax collectors, the traitors, the prostitutes, the outcasts in society are gaining entrance into the kingdom ahead of you. You who believe so strongly that you have responded to God correctly, but you've never paused long enough to consider your response. So this evening, in this season of Lent, let's pause. Let's consider our response. What has God called me to do? All of the answers we can have to that question can be summed up with something Jesus says in John 6, 29, when Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. Because the idea of belief, to put your faith and ultimate trust in Jesus Christ, you're saying, that your life now rises and falls on the very words of Jesus. 
God is causing us to move all the meaning and purpose of our own agenda and to shift it onto Jesus. What has God called us to do? To believe in him whom he sent. So how have I responded? Has this been my response? Have I said this with my mouth, but failed to do it with my actions? Because that is the problem of the story with the second son. But how have I responded to this call of God? How have I responded to the fact that God broke into history so that we can ultimately know him? When we consider our response this evening and over the next 40 days, we might ask, is there any mind changing to do? The story goes on in verse 32. For John came to show you the way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. Jesus is saying, even when you saw what was going on, even when you could feel the nudge of God, you did not change your minds. So is there any mind changing needed to be done on our journey towards Easter? But first, Ash Wednesday. As we consider what God has called us to do, how have I responded? And is there any mind changing needed? We start from an understanding of what our lives would look like apart from Jesus Christ. We are but ashes. Dirt and dust from which we came. As God created the first man from dust and apart from God's life-giving power to dust, we shall return. But thank God for the life-giving resurrection of Jesus Christ. Apart from Christ, we are dead in sin, but in Christ Jesus, we are made alive. Hallelujah. And so, as we start Lent, hear Jesus' question. What do you think? Thank you.